What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another weekly Wednesday live stream from Scalar Learning, where we tackle SAT Khan Academy problems straight from the Khan Academy website. And today we are continuing with ratios, rates, and proportions. So if you guys haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe so you can get all the updates for new videos, new content that's coming out all the time on a weekly basis. And make sure you get as ready as possible for your next SAT. Next one is coming up in May. I'm actually planning to take that test, so I'm really excited about that. That's always a fun experience, and it's something that I'm going to document and then share with you guys in, in addition to a score reveal. So that should be really fun. I also plan to do some preparation on the verbal side, which I haven't done in the past, just to see what I can do. So that'll be fun and exciting, and obviously more information for you guys. By the way, just dropped a new math music video on exponents, so if you're learning that concept or you want to refresh refresher on that concept, make sure to check out that video. All right, let's jump into ratios, rates, and proportions level two here we go so it says the musical interval between two sounds is called an octave right so from a C to another higher C uh, and if the ratio of the sound frequencies is two to one so we got a ratio of two to one the following table shows the names of the musical intervals between two sounds based on the ratios of the sound frequencies I, I bet you this is true this is actually kind of cool so a major third four to five perfect four three to four um, okay cool this, if a sound is played with a frequency of 480 hertz and the second sound and the second sound is 800 hertz or we can write it like this 480 to 800 what is the name of the musical interval between the two sounds so what we have to do is we have to simplify these ratios and then see what they boil down to in terms of these it's obviously not two to one it would be that would be like 800 to 400 so that's how but let's start let's start simplifying it just as if it were a fraction so if it were 480 over 800 we would start dividing by numbers that can go into both so first let's divide them both by 10 so now we have 48 over 80 now we can divide both of these by 8 and this is a calculator problem by the way so you could have used a calculator 48 divided by 8 is 6 all right and 80 divided by 8 is 10 and we can divide again by 2 Right? I'm doing this, like I always say, for the first time, so I'm just kind of running through it step by step. Now I'm seeing we could have divided both by 16, but it doesn't matter. We still get to the same answer, and we get 3 over 5, or a 3 to 5 ratio. And that would be this guy, a major sixth. Okay, let's see if that's correct. All right, it's correct. So that was it. Cool, so they did the same thing. Question number two. The maximum occupancy of a room is the total number. You know what? I didn't do a sound check. Let me make sure the sound is working. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay. The maximum occupancy of a room is the total number of people who can be in a room without causing a fire hazard. In a large room, a fire safety code states that the maximum occupancy is one person. There's a ratio for every seven square feet. All right. A college is hosting a concert hall that is this big and a thousand people are expected to attend according to the fire safety code approximately how many more people can attend the concert without causing a fire hazard all right here's my approach we can have one person here's my person row here's my area row we can have one person for every seven square feet equals we can have x people that's what we're trying to figure out how many people can come to this per 14,721 square feet. And the question is, what is X? But moreover, not just what is X, a thousand people are already coming. So we're gonna have to take X and then we're gonna have to subtract a thousand from X. So don't forget that step. If I wanted to, I could also say X plus 1,000, you know, just to make this even more robust. Uh, however you wanna do it. So this would, then X would give us exactly what we're trying to solve for. Okay, notice this is a non-calculator section, which is hard because we've got some pretty crazy numbers here. So it is what it is. Let's cross multiply and solve for X. So we got 14,721 equals seven times X plus 1,000. Distribute the seven, seven X plus 7,000 equals 14,721. Subtract both sides by 7,000. All right, I'm going to do a little mental math. Let's get rid of this. 
So 14,000, that becomes 7,721 equals 7x. And then we're going to divide both sides by 7. All right, time for log division. So you still you need to know log division with this no calculator section. 7 goes into 7 once. 0. 7 goes into 7 once. 0. Bring down the 1. And 3 times 7 is 21. So 1,103, uh, but it says approximately how many more, so we can say 1,100 more. So 2,100, and you think about it, that sounds right, like that's about, you know what, now I think about it, we didn't even totally need to do that because it's an estimate problem, I didn't realize that, but you could have kind of figured that it's going to be close to, uh, close to either 1,000 or 1,100, but this gives us a really nice, precise answer. So this definitely should be right, let's give it a shot here. Okay, cool. Next question, a donut company makes cream-filled donuts using one-fourth cup of dough and one-half tablespoon of cream. So this is cup, this is tablespoon. Uh, the company decides to change the recipe to use three times the amount of cream. Uh, this is the cream, right? Three times the amount of cream for the new triple stuffed donuts. If the company's new recipe uses the same amount of dough per donut, what is the ratio of dough to cream needed to make 12 triple stuffed donuts? All right. Ratio. What is the ratio? Well, it doesn't matter about the... Oh, I get it. Okay. Uh, per, this is per donut. So anyways, so first of all, we're tripling this. So I'm going to multiply this by three. So the new ratio is one-fourth to three over two. And I mean, honestly, like if we want a ratio for 12, the ratio is actually the exact same, but what they're doing is then they're multiplying this by 12, this whole thing by 12. So that becomes three to, let's see, 18, uh, which reduces to one to six. The 12 actually is meaningless because a ratio is a ratio. You know, to make 12 donuts, to make 200 donuts, it's the exact same ratio. All they really did here was get rid of the fractions by multiplying. And not they actually didn't multiply by 12. They multiplied by four. The uh, the common, the least common multiple of these two numbers. So that's how this becomes one, and then four times this becomes six. And so it's a ratio of one to six. So I'm pretty sure this is right. Let's make sure. I didn't make a mistake here. Yeah, okay, we're good. Cool. All right, a marine aquarium has a small tank and a large tank, each containing only red and blue fish. Let's draw a little small tank and a large tank. Uh, in the, each tank, the ratio of red to blue is, let's do it like this, red to blue is three to four. Okay, red to blue. The ratio of fish in the large tank, the ratio of fish, hold on, let's do it here too, three to four. But the ratio of the fish in the large tank to the fish in the small tank is 46 to five, okay? What is the ratio of the blue fish in the small tank to the red fish in the large tank? Oh my God, all right, blue fish in the small tank Sorry, blue fish in the small tank, so here, to the red fish in the large tank. All right, so my thought is, if you think about it, so we have a balance of each, but basically for every five fish here, we have 46 fish here. So let's think about it. With the, with the smallest numbers we can imagine possible, uh, we just multiply these relative numbers against these ratios. So it's like we could say if we have 15 red, we'd have 20 blue here. And then here we'd do the same thing with the three, 120, no calculator. So 120 plus 18 is 138 here. And then 160 plus 24 is 184 blue, okay? So essentially, like, this is a realistic possibility for the numbers. So we could have 20 blue fish to 138 red fish like this. 
but this isn't the most simplified version. We can reduce this just like if it were a fraction. I can see like, for example, both these numbers are even. So let's start there dividing by two. Okay, and we get 10 over not 70, but 69, right? 69 times two would be 138. And I don't think you can reduce this any further. And so it's 10 to 69. But look, they give two examples. They give 69 to 10. Why is it 10 to 69? Because they say ratio of blue fish in small tank. So that number's got to come first. So the 10's got to come first. Two red fish in the large tank, that comes second. So this is almost right, but this is right. All right, correct. Sweet. Last question. Two leading brands of paper towels are on sale. Brand A has six rolls. 56 sheets for 4.29. Cool. Brand B has eight rolls, 48 sheets for 5.99. Which of the following best describes the relationship between the cost per sheet of the two brands? Okay. So how many sheets do we have here? We've got and this is a calculator problem, which is nice. So first of all, if we want cost per sheet, we need to divide the cost by the number of sheets. So how many sheets do we have? Well, we have six times this, uh, 336 sheets. Here we have 320 plus 64 is 384 sheets. And then we need the cost per sheet. So whenever we say cost per something, we're, div we're dividing that first thing, which is the cost, by whatever comes after the per word, which is sheets. So we do 4.29 divided by that. Here we do 5.99 divided by that. And then we can get the cost per sheet. So I'm going to use a calculator here because this is going to be a nightmare otherwise. So let's use our calculator app on Google. All right, so 4.29 divided by 336, 4.29. 29 divided by 336 is 0 0.01276. 0.01276. This is dollars. Uh, and then obviously, we only go to, it's really one cent, but I'm just going to put all that information out there uh, so it's so we can keep it, just have as much accuracy as possible. Then we have this one, 599 divided by 384. 599 divided by 384 equals... 0 0.01559, 0 0.01559, and what's after the nine? Eight. Well, whatever, that's fine. Okay, so now we got pretty accurate comparisons. We can see that this one is cheaper, right? By a thousand, by, by like, like after one digit after the cent, or we could say by a thousandth of a dollar. So the two brands cost the same per sheet. Let's go through these and, and let's look at them one at a time. No, they don't cost the same. Brand B costs 0 0.003 more than A. Uh, yes, that's actually right. Look, it's 0 0.003 more, you know, approximately. Because you add 0 0.003 to this, and that's what brand B costs, 0 0.015. So it is probably B, but let's look at the rest. Brand A costs, no, brand A is cheaper, right? Brand B costs 0 0.03 cents dollars more. No, because then that would be 0 0.01 versus 0 0.04. So this is out. Uh, this is out too. So it's definitely it's definitely got to be B. Let's make sure this is correct. All right, sweet. All right, so that is it for the weekly Wednesday live stream. Again, if you like this video, you find it helpful, please click the like button. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel tremendously. And if you like what you see and you want to see more of it, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Not only do we have all this good stuff, we got a lot of other cool content that you can check out and peruse at your leisure. Thank you guys so much for joining and have a great rest of your day.